Now, if you've been watching the EFIS market, you've probably noticed that prices for entry-level EFIS are down at the $5,000 mark for the hardware, and that means an installation that can probably had, be had for under $10,000. Of course, Aspen has jumped into that competitive market with a new low-cost uh, EFIS display. It's the E5. But Aspen also has a, a variety of displays at a variety of price points. I'm here with Aspen Avionics' Mike Studley, who's come down with uh, a demo of these products. Before we go into the bench and get a look at them, Mike, what have we got for products uh, in the Aspen line, display-wise? We've got uh, two or three choices? We do. We've got a full range of products. We start at the entry level uh, E5, which was just STC'd. We've got our uh, flagship product, the Pro, with its MFDs that accompany it, and we've got some new stuff on the horizon as well. Okay, Larry, so this is our 2500 system. This is comprised of the Pro PFD, the MFD 1000, and an MFD 500. The Pro is all your primary instruments. We've uh, added features over the years like weather and traffic from ADSB sources. We can put synthetic vision on here as well, like that. You can see the traffic flying by, it shows up in 3D. The MFD 1000, a lot of the same features. We can put weather and traffic on here as well. You've got your charts, maps, topo. Uh, this unit also serves as a backup to the PFD with what press of one button. It turns into a, a totally independent PFD. Otherwise, you're flying along, you're using it uh, as a, a really nice moving map. You can pick and choose what you want to see in each one of these windows, or if you wish, you can go to a full screen view like this and have one big window. Depends how much information you want for what phase of flight you're in. This guy over here is our MFD 500. It does all the same maps and charts that the 1000 does. It just does not have this backup mode. That's the difference over here. This guy does not have backup. So Larry, these Three screens make up the 2500, but they're actually three independent units. The Pro PFD can be installed all by itself. The MFD 1000 is an add-on to the Pro, and the MFD 500 is an add-on to the Pro. So you can pick and choose. You can do a single screen, you can do these two, you can do these two, or you can do all three. The different installations have different requirements for backups. Uh, this MFD 1000 with its reversionary mode can serve as a backup airspeed and altimeter. You'll still need a backup attitude indicator to go along with it, just due to the fact that these are TSO'd under the old rules when EFIS were first announced and released. Uh, so we're, we're still living with a lot of the old style rules where some of our new products, that's not so much of an issue. So the beauty of this system, Larry, is you can pick and choose the parts that you need or the parts that work b best with your radios and for your mission with your aircraft. If you do a single screen, it'll drive your autopilot, it'll work with your existing radios. We work with just about anybody out there that works with us uh, as far as analog radios, no problem. Uh, analog autopilots, no problem. Digital autopilots, no problem. We've added features to these, uh, the, the PFD. It allows you to display the uh, mode enunciation, command bars for your flight director, uh, and uh, a, a variety of other, other autopilot features like uh, altitude pre-select, vertical speed pre-select, and some of the higher end units. Uh, we're continually developing interfaces, so as new products come on the market from third parties, we work with them as well. Uh, the, one of the best things about these displays is you don't have to cut up your instrument panel. You take out the instruments, these slide right in. They work with the existing radio, so you're not looking at a giant upgrade. But we'll work with radios like the KX-170Bs, the old analog stuff, that's not a problem. We have a uh, happy box that interfaces with those and uh, it allows you to display it on your glass panel of today. And now's a good time to talk about a limitation that Aspen pilots have accepted over the years, and it has to do with failed flight data, particularly attitude data, when the evolution senses a problem with the air data computer's pitot-static air input. A common scenario might be you're cruising along fat, dumb, and happy in and out of icy clouds, and you forget to throw that little switch that's labeled pitot heat. 
Now since the first gen displays use pedostatic input as part of the final AHARS attitude resolution, you might see that red X of death until the blockage is cleared. Now Aspen's new technology built into the E5 finally solves that bugaboo with a degraded GPS assist mode that uses the external navigator's GPS ground speed to sub for the indicated airspeed's input. Now keeping the attitude data alive until you sort out the issue is a huge improvement. You know that if you own an old Aspen. So some of the features that we've added on to the Pro and the MFD systems are, uh, we've got angle of attack, that's a fairly recent one. That will show you your remaining lift. It does not require any external probes or sensors. It's all done inside the screen with the, uh, the information that we have from the AHARS. Uh, we've also got uh, synthetic vision which is an add-on. You can put it on the PFD as well. Obviously shows your runway center line and everything. Um, AOA can be, in, can be activated on the MFDs as well. And lastly we have ADSB weather and traffic. You can show that on the big map like this so you can actually see traffic on this screen as well. You'll see it in 3D as the traffic flies by. All right, Larry, so what we have here is what we call the Pro Max. This is our new updated PFD that'll be available in the spring. Uh, this is essentially a replacement or an upgrade from the existing Pros that we've been selling. It's got a faster processor, up to four times faster. It's got a better screen on it. It's got a new battery in it and some other tricks uh, inside as well. The, uh, what, it, what it does is it gives us a much better picture. It runs smoother, it runs cooler, it can be dimmed to a lower level and it can also go to a brighter level for sunlight readability as well. This will be available in the spring. Uh, anybody who has a Pro now will be eligible to upgrade. It's going to be about three grand. Uh, you'll send your existing Pro in, we'll convert it to a Pro Max, and we'll send it back. Shop will put it in, and uh, you'll get, also get a two-year warranty out of it as well. Okay, and the last uh, display that we have to show you here today, Larry, is the E5. It's our latest uh, display that we put out. We just started shipping a few weeks ago. It's STC'd, it's non-TSO'd, so it uses the uh, new certification uh, rules. Uh, that gives us some leeway as far as what we need for backup instruments. Um, this one does not require a backup attitude indicator. You can remove your vacuum system if you want to. It really comes down to the pilot's comfort level. Um, the rest of the traditional six-pack gauges will stay in the panel. Um, it is a very basic unit when compared to our Pro system that we've seen previously. This gives you the basic instruments, your airspeed, your attitude, your altitude. Uh, you've got a compass and course deviation indicator. It's very similar, but a slightly different format than a traditional HSI. It does give you all the same information. You've got a course pointer, and you've got a deviation bar down at the bottom of the screen rather than in the middle of the screen. Uh, vertical speed, turn coordinator, those are on there as well. It's got GPS steering. Uh, it can interface with um, one GPS. It requires an IFR GPS to be installed, uh, but it can also interface with an analog um, nav radio. It'll display your VOR localizer and glide slope. It'll show the vertical portion of the GPS approaches as well. Uh, it works with just about all the second generation GPSs and later. Um, the analog radios would require uh, one of our ACUs. It's an analog converter unit. It adds about a thousand dollars to the price. Uh, that ACU can also be used to connect to analog autopilots. So if you're not in the market for a, a full retrofit and you want to do it at one step at a time, this will allow that to happen. Uh, let's talk on the low end, that E5. What kind of installation effort might a customer expect when it hits the floor? So the uh, E5 install is pretty straightforward. Uh, you're removing the two uh, attitude and the DG or HSI and the E5 will bolt right in. Don't have to cut the panel up. There's a bracket that attaches. Keeps it very straightforward. Uh, connecting to the radios. Uh, autopilot if you have it. 
Uh, if you have analog autopilot or an analog radio, then you'd use one of our ACU units like this. Uh, and then all of our installs will require uh, the heading sensor, uh, this RSM we call it. This is typically installed back on the tail of the aircraft, someplace away from all the other uh, electrical systems and sources of magnetic interference. So what does that mean dollar-wise, on the low end of the E5 approximately? Uh, it's somewhere around 30 hours for a basic install. Some, your dealer can obviously know your aircraft better and give you a real precise uh, estimate, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. Now check the pricing for the $5,000 entry-level E5 against Garmin's G5 series, which uses separate instruments for attitude and heading. Now pair those with the VHF nav adapters, and the Garmin's price approaches the $6,000 Aspen E5 when the E5 is spec with the optional ACU for autopilot and extended nav interface. Now in the end, we suspect the overall installation will be similar for each system, but you should get an accurate proposal for your airplane and a hands-on demo for both systems. Now the new Evolution 1000 Pro Max PFD, when it's available this spring, will be priced at around $10,000, and the current three-screen Evolution 2500 suite with optional angle of attack and synthetic vision is priced just shy of $30,000, not counting the installation. Now Aspen oftentimes runs pricing promotions that can reduce that price a bit. And a full-up three-screen suite with all the trimmings? Three screens, probably uh, 70 hours in that neighborhood. Well, that's easy math. At typical and rising labor rates, installation alone for a flagship EFIS might run $8,000, not counting any other work. And that's for a typical non-pressurized piston. You'll pay a premium for the engineering costs involved to install that RSM on a pressure vessel. And where can they find more about the Aspen product line? AspenAvionics.com. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate the uh, demo. Thank you, Larry. Now look for a full report on Aspen Z5 in an upcoming issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Reporting for Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglosano and thanks for watching.